All right, we are back. So we're not gonna go on a date with Anaya again. <laughs> um, I've already went through Biggs. So we're going with Isabel. So we're gonna, she's 27, she, her, theater teacher, okay. And I haven't read through this one yet, so. This is all new to me as it is you, if you haven't played it. Uh, well-educated populace. Ooh, cheating. Hmm. Yikes. Okay, which is why it's essential that when supervising student outdoors, we monitor the way that they interact with geese, swans, and other waterfowl. In addition, we must model this behavior by maintaining a safe distance and not antagonizing them. You direct your laser pointer towards the screen behind you, underlining some data you put together about the rates of swan and goose attacks in the Tri-County area. You occasionally put together presentations outlining district policies for the various faculty and staff members who work for the Jersey City School District. Today, you're going over the field trip and recess guidelines for a group of part-time art faculty who are also often run who also often run various camps and after school activities. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me via email or stop by my office room at 143 of the main district headquarters, which is the building we're in right now. There's a scattering of applause as you end your slide so slideshow and step away from the podium. It's easy for you to imagine you just accepted the Nobel Peace Prize and are now receiving a standing ovation for your contributions to the human race. But this isn't the University of Oslo, this is a conference room in the district office where it's only polite to clap after a presentation. Being forced to face the reality of your everyday life is unpleasant to say the least. You head back to your office down the hall and close the door behind you. It's hard to stay positive when you're miserable and your desk is covered in work that has to be done before the day is over with. You'd rather organize your desk or rearrange the framed pictures of your kids that cover every square inch of your office. Instead, you have to file dozens of requests and see that funds are appropriately safeguarded and administered. Things are shitty right now. The temptation to kick your shoes back, recline your chair, and take naps is strong. The only thing keeping you from getting comfortable is the fact that anyone could walk in on you snoring. You just had to break your you just had to break your heart with your own two hands. You don't need to lose your job too. I want to go home so bad. Before you can get started on not doing more work, there's a knock at your door. Come in. You have to be available during work hours. It doesn't matter what your bone tired. It doesn't matter that you're bone tired or that you haven't eaten a decent meal since things with Anaya went pear-shaped. And we ain't talking about bodies. You've been functioning on pure vibes. You'd rather this person not come in at all. Hey, Em. I just wanted to drop off my new W4 with my new address on it. Marisol Fabri, elementary school teacher. Amhari's co-worker. Okay. Marisol, Marisol teaches dance classes across the district as an alternative to PE. You two get along well. Interacting with her is like injecting sunshine straight into your veins. She's a pick-me-up from the soul. If there's anyone you'd want to see after a long day of work, it's her. Uh-huh. You know you can email that, right? Yes, I also know that you won't gossip on the district servers. She, sat, she sidles up to your desk with a sly grin. Is this about Apollo again? No, that fucking guy can go kick rocks for all I care. This is way better. Alright, go on. I heard... And if anyone asks, you didn't hear it from me, but I heard... You roll your eyes. Yeah, the biology teacher at the middle school who refuses to learn what the word lesbian means. We all know about that. No, not him. A cute, very el eligible, and did I mention cute part? Time faculty member is interested in you. Sure, I'll believe you when I see it for myself. You haven't told her about everything that happened with Anaya a couple months ago. It isn't that you don't trust her. You do. The law of gossip dictates that as long as you tell her that, you really really mean it when you say you don't tell anyone she'll keep her mouth shut it's just that our highest judgment 
on it is enough. You text with Anaya every now and then, but it's hard. You still feel awful about everything and you find it easier to simply avoid things that make you feel awful. That's a common thing amongst people. We all kind of do that, I'm sure. Come on, Em. Not everyone is like Nor. By that, she means somehow she means somehow capable of making you both the best and the worst versions of yourself in equal measure. I know. It's just... Nope. I'm not listening to you make excuses about why you don't deserve to be happy. She's right. You hate to say it, but she's right. Okay, you're right. If this mysterious teacher drops into my office tomorrow, I'll give her a shot. By the next day, you're pretty much forgotten your conversation with Marisol. You are elbow deep in emails and you told the administrative assistant to, to tell anybody who calls you that you're busy. Even with the precaution taken, you still hear a knock at your door around noon. Come in. This better be fast, or if not fast, easy. Hi. You can sit wherever. Sorry, it's kind of a disaster in here. What can I do for you today? You look over the tops of your glasses to see who, who's come into your office. Oh. Oh, she's really hot. You imagine yourself getting spritzed with water like a cat who jumps on kitchen counters. You're literally the HR director. You cannot lust after your co-worker before you've even properly met them. Well, um... Is she blushing? If you remember correctly, this is Isabel Morgan, the theater teacher who works part-time, like Marisol does. Um, hi, I'm Isabella. I'm Isabel, and I just wanted to, uh... I don't want to make you uncomfortable or anything, but would you want to maybe grab a coffee on Friday? You feel like you're going to going to short circuit. Yeah, let's date. Why would we friend zone her? What's the, what the fuck? Oh. She's so fucking hot, you want to jump out the window. Are you asking me on a date, Miss Morrigan? Well, I guess that depends. Do you need to call me Miss Morrigan the whole time? Not at all. Then yeah, I'm asking you on a date. You grab one of your business cards from the holder on your desk and you scribble your cell phone number on the back. Text me, I'll see you on Friday. Isabel takes the card and stands, tucking it into her pocket before walking back towards the door. I'll see you Friday. Oh, now we can fuck this one up. The next, is this the place where uh, Anaya and Keaton went to? <laughs> Maybe I'm tripping. The next couple of days pass in a blur. Once Friday finally comes around, you feel like you're more than ready for this coffee date. You agreed to meet at a cafe near the district office that you like to go on with lunch, go on at lunch sometimes. You're early, which is exactly what you want it to be. You order your usual six-shot latte, latte with cinnamon, cayenne syrup, and get settled at the table by the window. You really want this to go to well. It needs to go well. To say that your confidence was shattered after the whole Anaya thing would be an understatement. Good, because, the, like, I'm sorry, but M Mhari was very rude about Anaya being insecure and, like, you know, lacking self-confidence. I just thought that was kind of rude of Mhari, but, you know, to each their own. Everybody has character flaws. Yes, you can admit that you could have handled the whole thing a hell of a lot better, but at the same time, you still really can't figure out what else you could have done. With you, it's on or off. No in-betweens, and normally, you can use those tendencies to excel at anything you set out to do. In romance, though, you have yet to figure out how to make it translate. Maybe Isabel will be your chance. Amari, you're mushing. Your musing is interrupted by Iza's arrival. You stand up and greet her with a quick hug. Hi, it's nice to see you. You too. I'll set my bag down and go order. I'll be right back. I'll get it. What's your order? You aren't trying to be you aren't trying to suggest anything to buying her coffee. It's just that you know exactly how much money she makes as a part time faculty member and you figure she could use the seven dollars more effectively somewhere else. Wow, how sh chivalrous. I cannot say that word. Uh I just want a hot chocolate with almond milk, maybe with a half a shot of espresso. You try your absolute hardest not to sneer at a grown woman drinking hot chocolate. Of course, it's totally not a problem. I'll be right back. You return a few minutes later with her drink. Thanks, I'll get the next round. Once you're seated, you take a deep sip of your latte. It isn't the caffeine 
does much to actually stimulate you. It's just that not having any will leave you with a pounding migraine. So, how has your week been? You're expecting some light small talk, maybe some work-related things. That's not what happens. Well, the other day I was in a Q2Q rehearsal for a show I'm going to be in next week, and the lighting designer would not shut up about the new Marvel movie. It was so annoying. You really don't keep up with superhero movies like that, mostly because you're nearly 30. But you don't live under a rock either. You can't listen to the radio or go to the grocery store or even leave the house without getting slapped in the face with an ad for the latest CGI masterpiece. At the very least, you remember the name of the newest edition of the franchise, at least you think you do. So eventually he starts talking to me about it and I'm like, listen, they're framing the division as like just regular regular black ops when like there's no actual criticism of US imperialism. Like, just look at the oracle in the Silver Century. Like, sure, they're people of color, but they're also billionaire tech moguls. Like, hello? You have no idea what the fuck she's talking about. And it's honestly even worse than just regular old propaganda because you have to, you have Tetuba and Harold making little jokes about how they aren't good representation. Like, come on, it's totally ridiculous. So, do you like the movie? What? No, I just watched it. Oh, okay. Isabel continues to talk about things you really can't follow. You clench your jaw, not because you want to, but because she's honestly kind of annoying. So pretty, though. She's animated, talking with her hands to punctuate and emphasize, and you can't help but stare at them as she continues to go on and on and on. Wow, she really is so pretty. Anyways, that's enough about me. Tell me a little about you. I've heard, like, pretty much nothing about you. Well, you hope she didn't tell you anything important. I guess I like to read, do mechanic work whenever I have the time. Uh, I don't know, I'm pretty handy, so I like to fix things up around the house. And obviously, I spend a lot of time with my kids. Come on. Uh, Arahai already told me that stuff. Arahai? Arahai Cooper? She looks mortified after you say your best friend's name. You know Arahai? Well, I mean, he didn't want me to say anything about it, um, we went on a couple of dates and it, and even though it didn't really work out, we still talk and he said that maybe the two of us would get along. So he put you up to this. No. Well, yes, technically, but honestly, like, I would have wanted to anyways, really. You don't know exactly what that but you don't know exactly why that bugs you as much as it does. A spike of annoyance shoots down your spine as you run a hand through your hair. Sorry, it's not you. I'm annoyed at Arahai pretty much all the time, so I mean, if it wasn't this, it would be something else. Ha, I get you. He can certainly be an intense guy. You can say that again. Anyways, tell me about your family. You realize that you never actually offered any more detailed information about yourself, but Isabel doesn't seem to notice. Well, my abuela, she launches into what sounds like a well-rehearsed monologue. You don't really understand why she's so performative during what's supposed to be a regular conversation. It's starting to become a little bit too much for you, if you're being honest. So then I just ended up with all these extra tickets because abu abuelita, abuelita took one look at the script and she nearly fainted. And it's like, okay, obviously I wasn't going to take any of the little kids to go see it, but now nobody is going to go. How is it possible to say so much without saying so little? Uh-huh. You don't really know why you're having such a hard time listening to her, but it's really difficult. She's so hot, though. We're thinking with our dick. So, like, I mean, if you're free next Wednesday, let me know. Hmm, I'd have to get a sitter, but I can make that work. Most people wait until the weekends for an evening date, but then again, Isabel isn't the most isn't like most people. You might as well give this a shot. Really? Sure, why not? The twins will be fine for an evening and it would be nice to see you. Wow, you really don't seem like the contemporary theater type, but hey, the show is really fun, so I bet you'll like it. What? A show? Oh no. What have you just gotten yourself into? Uh play goal. I'm sure I will. What the hell is she talking about? You replay the last few minutes in your head. You were looking at the curve of her lips when she said something about a wool. 
it's like funny too or like I think it is it's a little out there but I think it has something to say that's right she's in some play about a competition dance reality show there are levels of media references at the play here that you really do not know how to even begin to grasp I'm actually really excited for you to see the show yeah me too you get ready to leave the cafe soon after as you both need to return to work I'll come by your office tomorrow to drop off your ticket. Sounds great. I'll see you then. Well, at least you're getting an evening out from all this. Yeah. And besides, you'll probably find Isabel a lot more endearing when she's actually on stage. On Wednesday night, you're walking through your kitchen while adjusting the sleeves on your dress shirt. Okay, so if they're having trouble sleeping, their stuffies are might. Their stuffies are microwave safe, but do not let them see you put them in there. It'll freak them out. Noted. Don't traumatize the kids. Anything else? Yeah, actually, if either of them start describing a dream, write it down so I can tell my auntie Babuala about them later. Sounds good. Mama! You walk swiftly back to the living room so you can rejoin your sons. What is it, my dove? Um, is... Is Auntie Biggs going to live here now? No, my dove. He's just here for tonight. But what about if you don't come back? It isn't usual for Jaleel to be the one who's anxious about you leaving the house. Don't worry, Jaleel. I'll be home tonight, and when you wake up, we can make breakfast together. Does that sound nice? Hmm. You sigh and try to come up with the best way to reassure him. Mama? Mama will come back. Don't be scared, Jaleel. He walks over to his brother and puts a reassuring hand on his shoulder. See? Everything will be fine. No, Mama will come home, but she's going to be sad. Well, that's not exactly what you wanted to hear. But hey, this is a toddler. He can't even tie his own shoes, so you feel okay glossing over this one. Hey, kids. Why don't you show me where you keep your toys? You're grateful to have a friend like Biggs. Jaleel and Jabari scamper towards him, allowing you to grab your keys and wallet. Alright, I'll be home around 10. Call me if you need anything. Have fun. I'll do my best. You arrive at the theater early enough to get comfortable in your seat, but not so early that you'd be waiting around forever. The play is evidently being held in a dungeon, because as you walk in... You and a small group of people are handed programs and led down a set of stairs that is definitely not up to code. Okay, this is fine. It's all fine. The space itself looks alright. If not poorly ventilated, there are, some, there are about 50 chairs arranged right in front of the stage area marked off by glowing tape. Okay, this is a lot more intimate than you thought it would be, but you can adapt. You scan the available seats looking for one that would give you the most... Advan advantages position. I think the middle is better. You find a seat in the middle row and settle in. Other small groups get led get led into the same space that you, the, I don't know what the fuck that said. Whew. Okay, this will be this is a boring day. I'm sorry. I don't like I don't like this one. It might get better. I don't know. Okay, this will be fine. I'm to I totally got this. And my reading sucks. The first scene begins soon after you find your seat. There's something about a teammate getting injured, there's a puppet, and Isabel is beaming on stage, wearing the kind of stuff you remember the dance team girls wearing when you were a kid. So far, you're not really sure you get the whole theater thing, but you're at least following the plot. Your phone buzzes in your pocket, and fearing that something has gone wrong with one of your sons, you quickly check it as discreetly as you can. Since when do you like theater? A chill runs down your spine. Of course, of course this is happening to you right now. On the stage, a guy dressed in deliberately ill-fitting athleisure calls in the next big competition that they're heading towards. Your eye twitches. Ignore her. For once in your wretched life, don't let her make you crazy. You can do this. You can be strong. It takes all your willpower to remain focused on the performance. The performance breaks out into a dance routine with Isabella moving about the stage with the ballerina finesse. If you didn't know she wasn't a dancer by trade, you would think she's given it everything she's got because 
you're in the crowd watching her. Still, you feel like your reactions are delayed compared to the rest of the audience. You keep asking yourself, wait, what just happened? And by the time you figure it out, the joke or illusion or whatever it is has already passed and you're laughing and clapping in seconds after everyone else's. At the same time, you feel Noor staring a hole into the back of your head, which isn't exactly doing great things for your focus. I think being dead would be better than this, honestly. Isabel has started to do a monologue. She's standing on a chair talking about how she can how she can't fit all her power in her tiny body. And you strongly suspect this would mean a lot more to you if you had been able to focus on the things that led up to the scene. The lights start to fade, leaving Isabella sorry, Isabel on stage bathed in red pulsating light. Why can't you be present for this? For her. Your jaws clench so hard about hard you're about to crush your molars into dust. Don't do that. Dentists are fucking expensive, bitch. You can't stop bouncing your legs at your, as your mind races. The stage light fades to black and someone comes out to announce the 20 minute intermission. I hate our ex-wife. You shoot out of your seat and practically run up the stairs and out to the parking lot. I can't fucking do this. You open the trunk of your car and start digging through your emergency kit. Shit. You wrap your hand around a pack of Couport menthols and, and a lighter that you haven't touched in months. Seconds later, a rush of minty nicotine lapses. Sorry. <clears throat> Laps at your fried nerves. So you're smoking again. You turn around to face her. It hasn't been your business. What I do since you fled, since you filed for divorce, nor. You really don't think that, do you? She walks towards you, her gaze sharp, her hips swaying back and forth through the through the newer like shadow of the parking lot. Oh, no, I mean it. I'm not doing this. Doing what? Speaking to the mother of your only children? Unless that Italian slut you're seeing isn't too old for you to knock her up to. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Don't do this. You're doing your absolute best to keep your voice at a reasonable volume. You never thought you would admit it, but for once you really, really are not interested in screaming at Noor. You're always trying to start something with me, and I'm not getting into another pointless fight over nothing just to keep you entertained. You can't really place the look on her face right now. It's like, it's like she might actually think you're right. You take a step towards her. Look, I'm always going to love you, you know that. Yeah, I know. She sighs. Didn't she get with somebody else already? I guess even after everything, I still want your attention. She sniffs. Yeah, I get it. I really do. Hell, I still want to impress you. I want you to think I can do anything. But we both know that neither of us deserve to have, have to fight for that kind of thing. Her face falls and you can't help but reach out to her. She leans in, letting you wrap her in your arms while she cries softly into your chest. It's almost like before. Deep down, though, you know that it isn't. It can't be. It shouldn't be. It's not fair. I know, Nora, I know. You help her get back inside and walk her towards the bathroom so she can clean herself up. Do you want me to wait for you? No, it's alright. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. You make your way back to your seat just in time for the show to restart. The lights go down, and this time you feel lighter than you have in years. Good. Whatever, whoever among the people here who hasn't gotten into a screaming argument in public can feel free to cast the first stone upon you. After the intermission, you do your best to focus on the play. You're missing some context. Some context. I'm trying to read fast. I need to stop. But you think you're starting to understand what's going on. The result of the big dance contest were a mixed success as one person has comically large tiara on while another lay face down on the floor moaning. Eventually though, things begin to wrap up. Someone who isn't Isabel has fake blood smeared all over their face and crotch. And then all of a sudden people are standing on chairs talking about their souls and their vaginas. And okay, maybe you are missing more context than you thought. Isabel hits her final pose on stage, followed by another monologue and a dramatic half split from the girl in the massive tiara. And then it's over. Wow. 
you clap along with the rest of the audience, making sure to cheer extra loud when Isabel comes out to take her bow. One thing subtle, you walk up to Isabel since the stage is so close to the audience. You were amazing. Thanks. Why don't I meet you outside in a few minutes? It's way too hot down here to actually talk. Isabel, Isabel's glittery makeup is practically dripping down her face from how hard she's sweating. Yeah, that sounds good to me. I'll see you in a few. Once you get outside, you stand near the door so that Isabel doesn't have to look for you. Is that... Oh my goodness, Amhari? You haven't had a conversation with Ali before now. And to be honest, you wanted to keep it that way. Oh, hi. You act like this is the first time you're seeing either Ali or Nora all alone all night. Hello, Amhari. How did you like the show? It appears she's following your lead. She always was quick on the uptake. It was great. I don't normally do this kind of thing, but it was nice. Oh, Ali has a seasonal pass that works for most of the independent theater companies in the city. Isn't that right, BB? You know exactly what she's trying to do here, but you aren't going to take the bait and risk having Isabel walk out and see you in the middle of yet another fight with your ex-wife. After Anaya, well, you can confirm that this kind of thing is pretty much a universal turn-off. Ali begins talking about how important it is to support the arts and you immediately tune her, tune her out. So what? She's more charitable than you? More pious or whatever? She's boring is what she is. Your moment of trying to physically shred Ali into a fine pink viscera is interrupted by the sound of the door opening again. Isabel comes out carrying an overstuffed backpack. Actually, and this is such a funny coincidence, I came here specifically to see Isabel's performance. Nor, Ali, this is Isabel. You put your arm around her as if you're presenting her to a crowd. Hi! It's lovely to meet you. I'm Dr. Noor Fahum Abdi. She extended a hand for Isabel to shake. It's so nice to meet you, Isabel. The way Noor talks, you'd think Amhari never left her garage. You do your best not to let your irritation show on your face. Ha, well, that's just Noor for you, isn't it? Well, we should be going home. It was nice to meet you, Isabel. Your performance was wonderful. It rivaled the one we saw in New York when we caught the show off Broadway. Who was that actress here? Oh yes, your performance was on par at least with Ileana Mirabelle's in New York. You don't know what they're talking about, but given the deep blush on Isabel's face, you assume it's a compliment. Wow, that's a, that really means a lot. Thanks, it was nice to meet you. They leave finally. Now it's just you and Isabel alone in the parking lot. You really were great. Yeah? Really, I don't normally do this kind of thing, but it was honestly really great. For some reason, she gets a sour look on her face. Yeah, okay. Okay, this is weird. She's totally being weird right now. Did I do something to upset you? No. Uh-oh. Well, yes. Oh no, this is not what you wanted to hear. It's just... You were sitting six feet in front of me the whole time, and I don't know, it just really didn't seem like you were into it at all. Shit, she isn't exactly wrong. Isabel, I mean, yeah, I guess this really isn't my thing, but really, it doesn't need to be a big deal. But that's the issue. This is my thing. It's important to me, and if you're not even entertained by it, not even a little, I, I can get into it if that's what you mean. She smiles at you like she knows exactly what you talk to Nora about during the intermission. No, you shouldn't have to force yourself into something because I like it. Or anyone for that matter. It's okay, really. You hear echoes of Nora as she says it. Oh, as she says it. It isn't fair, but that's how it is. And you know that she's right, but you don't want to have to contort yourself to fill spaces that don't even want, that you don't even want to be a part of. As you realize that, it occurs to you that you're having as much easier time listening to Isabel now that you aren't desperately trying to figure out how you can make dating her work for you. Isabel, I... You don't have to explain yourself, really. If anything, this is a win, since we can rub it in our high's face that he was wrong about something. Ha, you're so right. Telling Arahai he's wrong is honestly one of my favorite things to do. 
Well, shit, it looks like we do have something in common after all. You can't help it, you laugh. It starts off at an inappropriate... It starts off at an appropriate level for the situation. But then, the second Isabel joins in, you find yourself sliding into his near hysterics. Sorry, I... No, I'm sorry. But you both keep laughing, egging each other on until you're both wiping tears from the corner of your eyes. This keeps happening. Happening, You're laughing more than you ever have in years, and it's always for a reason you can't name. As your shoulders heave, you feel a strange lightness wash over you. It's like you haven't felt, after talking to Nora, only more total, more complete. You really don't get it. Isabel is still kind of annoying, but after all, the idea of laughing like this with her in the future, you wouldn't mind that at all. You can't know for sure, but it looks like Isabel has been experiencing a similar feeling of having a looming weight lifted from her shoulders. After some time, you both manage to pull yourself together. I should probably head home. She pulls out her phone and starts tapping at the screen. Hey, do you want to ride at home? Sure, I'd like that. You take her bag from her and carry it to your car. It's much heavier than you thought it would be, but you're pretty sure you don't let it show. Alright, just tell me where to go. A few minutes later, you come to stop in front of Isabel's house. Thanks so much for the ride. I hope you have a good night. You too. She walks off, opening the front gate before walking towards the porch. You plan on waiting here until you see that she gets inside safely. Suddenly, she turns around and runs back towards your car. You roll down the passenger win window and she leans in. Hey, do you want to get coffee again on Friday as friends? A grin spreads across your face. Yeah, that would be great. Aww. Local woman takes high road. What the fuck does that say? High road what? Oh, high road for once. Okay. I mean, that's... I mean, that wasn't bad. Who's Yolanda? Am I dumb? Is that, is that a new date? <laughs> ah! Okay. So I will uh, end this and we can continue. Thanks for listening.